interrupt this broadcast. Welcome to episode six of Six Things. I'm Rob Ellis. Now, each week on Six Things, you know, we count down six of the things you may have missed in the news cycle. We've got six new topics. I have two new guests. So, of course, as always, let's get to some introductions. You've probably heard our weekdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on WGNI. Radio DJ Jackie Jordan. Hello, Thank you. Rob. Thank you, Jackie, for being here. And I'm very happy because uh, my good friend, internet radio host uh, of The Bob Show, which focuses on kind of the positive side of pop culture, Bob Merrick is here. And and you've been in town working on Iron Man 3. That's what brings you to Wilmington. I have for a very long time now, it seems. And <laughs> well, I don't think we're ever leaving Wilmington anytime soon. Is so. that a hint that you're... It's not. Actually, I, I want to I say Wilmington has been great to us. And I've loved it here. The whole crew has loved it here. And I'm not just saying this. Wilmington is beautiful. Well, and Ooh. we've had a really great time. I hear Iron Man 4. <laughs> yeah, you're not true. going anywhere. I won't be back. <laughs> hey. I've got limits. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're both here. We've got six things. Let's start with the countdown. Here it is, number six. Now, there are many things to worry about when it comes to a post-nuclear apocalypse, but of course, the most important question that we all want to know, will we be able to drink beer? Now, in 1957, get this, the government conducted a study. They exploded two atomic bombs in the Nevada desert. They put out beer cans and bottles and all kinds of things nearby just to test the effects. It was called Operation Teapot, as you see there. What they found was it actually wasn't that bad. So would you, they had a tester that had to go back and test the taste of all this stuff. Would you have tested it? There's no way I would have. That's what I, you know, I don't get that at all. Like it's literally, these are cans of beer that have survived an atomic yes. bomb. Yes, yeah. some of them did. <laughs> yeah, Not I totally would have. Don't judge me. <laughs> no, I absolutely, I absolutely would have, and here's why. After I drink too much beer, I already feel like an atomic explosion is coming, mm. so I go straight for it. So why not I just be, live in the moment? Absolutely. Live in the moment. And they tested, like, I think they tested food, like food stores, and some of the beer bottles got, you know, busted by flying debris and stuff, but there were traces of radioactivity. Yeah, live on the edge. Only traces. Tra well, there was traces. Even though it's in an aluminum can. It was okay, in... wait. <laughs> wait a minute. It was within acceptable levels. Whatever that means, but that's what they Wait, said. Wait, acceptable levels for 1956? For 1957, 55? yeah. Mm. I'd still roll the dice on it. I'd well, give it a you're, whirl. You're brave. I would have. I would give. I would give it a whirl just so that you know. You got to know what's coming in life, and if an atomic explosion from your inside is coming out, <laughs> I want to be ready. That's a that's a whole different study. Rob, I like to be prepared. <laughs> well, you know, they, they placed them within a quarter of a mile. I was just trying to get the how close they were from the explosion, but less than a quarter of a mile, so like a thousand feet from mm -hmm. from it. And I... I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> mm -mm. I'll so they were know. well within... I'll let you know how it turns out later. Please do. Yeah, when, you, when you've got like alien and Sigourney Weavers coming out of your stomach. Yes. God, I would be on every channel. I'd be the most popular girl ever. So You'd that be sounds dead. Like a, that too. But sounds like an popular. episode of The Simpsons, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, it totally does. Nuclear energy is not something to joke around about. <laughs> yeah, Rob. except for the last five minutes that we've been doing. Let's move on to number five. And I, I thought this one was a really fun story. Uh, it's your wedding day. You want everything to be perfect. But one couple had an unexpected visitor change their plans, the President of the United States. What happened was they planned a rally at the same venue that they had been planning their wedding. They gave them a week's notice, which I thought was great. But here's the best part. When after all was said and done, um, they had to, like, the parking lot was taken up by some of the motorcade, I believe. And so as the president left, they left him with a wedding present. And this is their present. It was a handwritten note from President Obama. And uh, I think it was like a mint julep cup. <laughs> it was, because the guy said he was okay. going to have a mint julep with it, yeah. What is a mint julep? Uh, you don't know what a mint julep is? You, you're going to drink I'm, beer out of well, that, I'm that from explains New York. it all. We drink beer. You'll drink beer out of an aluminum can that's gone through radioactive. <laughs> but mint but julep, you won't know a mint julep. Those are way no. too complicated. That's honestly well, that's here too in the, classy. Here in the it south, too classy. I'm uh, from New York. We drink beer. It's a mint julep. It's See, definitely. I'm the southerner here out of all of you, and I don't know exactly what the drink is. Well, I'm the alcoholic in the group. <laughs> so <laughs> center stage, Bob. <laughs> Actually, I don't know exactly what's in it, but it's a mint. It's a minty cocktail that comes what? in a martini glass, except for over there, it's in a. 
uh, a little, and a little silver glass. martini, or silver mint julep cup. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. and a well, little tray, and so it's a kind of a classy gift. Is yeah, what you're but saying. more right. interestingly, right. we're talking about the fact this is the president of the United States has left this as a gift because he knows they he screwed up their wedding. Right. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool of them to do, but I feel like the wedding planner should have been fired. The wedding planner <laughs> should know. Yeah. Well, they gave him a week's heads up. I think that's pretty good. And then for them to uh, him to leave a, a, a handwritten note that says, yes. "Congratulations on the wedding." Um, I, I've got it here somewhere. Uh, Michelle and I wish you a great life together, Barack Obama. I mean, it's a classy move. It's a classy yeah. move. And a lot of the time, too, with the election coverage and the stuff that's happening, you, I don't think they know where they're going that far in yeah. advance. So, you know, he ended up at this place, kind of wedding crashing. I would have preferred to see him in there doing the Macarena, though. <laughs> Wouldn't you have liked to <laughs> take off the on the chance? should have joined the Thank wedding. Yeah. <laughs> the Although, what was interesting, if you read the article, though, I don't think the guy is a Barack Obama supporter. Uh -oh. Because he makes, a, I saw he, that. he makes a little offhanded comment where he's like, even though he's not my president, like I I'm no, still he happy said, to love him it. or hate him, it's yeah, a like, gift yeah, from the president. Yeah. yeah, love him or hate him, it's a gift from the president. Yeah, you can tell mm -hmm. that he wasn't. But well. maybe, maybe it'll be a swing vote. You know? Hey, that, right? That's probably what Brock was thinking. He's like, someone give me a mint julep cup. Exactly. This could be a swing vote. Every this vote counts. Exactly. And, yeah. and keep him liquored up. Mint julep yeah. cups for everybody. <laughs> They'll still check your ID if you're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know. At the voting booth, are they really? I'm not admitting anything at this moment. I wonder what happens if you go to the voting booth and drunk. They still check your ID. From what I've heard. Check your ID for being drunk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to number four. Let's talk about PIN numbers. Trying to keep your bank account safe. You know, we all have our, you know, four-digit code that we're supposed to enter. What do you think is the most popular and what do you think is the most unpopular number? Now, you guys read the article, so I'm just going to go through what the most popular. I couldn't believe this when this I read this. This blows my mind. This absolutely blows my mind. Look at those numbers. Now, the first, of course, number one, and, and here's what surprised me. One, two, three, four. Who's got a PIN number? That, who still oh does that? Okay, let me tell you, I've worked for, I've had a lot of bosses who trust me with their information and their passwords and the email and everything else. You'd be amazed how many people use one, two, three, four. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised by it this It said all. 11%. That, that means one in 10. One in 10 mm. had 11%, or 11% had one, two, three, four as their PIN number. This yeah. is baffling it's to me. Insane. It's insane. And then in the top 20, all of the numbers 1111, 2222, 3333, <laughs> all of those made it in the top 20. Mm -hmm. Down the list, of course, 4321, which I guess is a little bit better than 1234. Really? Well, I, mean, <laughs> I also have 2580, by the way, my friend. The gate to enter her apartment building used to be 2580 for but that very reason. Where does she live? Can we hang out? Yeah. <laughs> well, where, Tell everybody where, where she lives. Where does 2580 so, yeah. come from? Does it, anyone know? It's the, it's the, it's the order on, a, <gasps> on the keypad. Oh. If you go straight down the middle. Straight down the middle. Yeah. yeah. Huh? I love, though, and I can't believe I've never been smart enough to have done this. I love 8675309. Well, they said that like, if you have a seven-digit pin, uh, yeah, yeah. Seven pin number, that there were, it was 8675309, and of course there was the 11111, seven times, 22, that, seven times. 8675309 was my email Jenny's password got my number, was it? Well, before they made you put like a letter in a character, yeah, see, I was and then nervous. it was like J8675309, dollar sign. And, how, <laughs> and, and passwords, <laughs> look, I know, it's, I know it's for security reasons, but passwords are getting a little crazy with the requirements. Aren't oh my they? Gosh. You got to have a ca an uppercase letter yeah. and a symbol, and a, your mother's maiden name has got to be in there it's somewhere. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I actually then have to write down <laughs> what it is, and then I have to keep it on me, which totally eliminates the yeah. need for a password because I have it written and taped written up on down. my computer screen. <laughs> I <laughs> like, agree. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, we didn't we didn't cover what the most uncommon was, so let's go ahead and show that one. Which I thought this was so weird. Why would you release that? Yeah. This, so this, now it's not. This to, so me, now, this to me is like telling us, like telling, getting on the news and saying like. You missed us. Here's where you can bomb us. <laughs> like, why yeah. would you give away the most uncommon? And it literally called this the best password to use. All these people are like, oh, yeah, exactly. I'm All those people using it zero six eight are just like. <laughs> well, they said exploded. it was out of out of three point <laughs> four million that they had that they that they um, they went through. Uh, only twenty five people had that number. So where did they get this info? Because I thought our <laughs> passwords you. are supposed to be private. Well, well it was researchers at Data Genetics, it says. Okay, well, so I is this government David funded? Genetics, yeah. Because I want to know who was paid <laughs> oh, no. to go through all of these, because oh, I want to refund. Oh, computer. No, they have a computer that went through all you this. You think. But watch, there's like Stu in the newsroom is like sitting there <laughs> going through all these passwords, and we're all paying for it. It's going to be on your next right. paycheck. Watch. All right, let's get to our number three topic on the countdown. Uh, we all try to keep our cars clean as possible. Uh, a Lexus owner, you know Lexus, people are very proud of their Lexuses, Lexi. <laughs> she was picking up her nephew from a water park, but she didn't want to get her car seats wet, her leather seats, so she made her nephew ride in the trunk. Ooh. Now, the witnesses 
saw this and they called the okay. police. And would you have called the police if you saw someone getting into the, yes. putting their kid, you would? Especially putting a kid inside the trunk. Like I've had people, like if I, if I pull up and I'm like, my dog's in the car and I have like even the windows down, like I've had people <laughs> yeah. like, I came, I like literally was running to drop something off. Like I didn't even go inside the store. Like I, it was, yeah. and I came running back and I had a fire truck sitting next to my they car. They called the police yeah, on Well, you? The, the fire truck just happened to be in there, but somebody went over and, re yeah. and told the fire truck. So the, the fireman's in there and he's like, sorry. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I just had to be there. But that's for my dog and I take very good care of my dog. You're not gonna put a child in a trunk of a car. Well, this, this hot summer, there was a lot of focus on that. I learned this summer that people like their pets more than their kids. So I can see <laughs> the I did, I got more calls every day. So-and-so has a dog in their car. It's at this intersection and I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, like, what are you going to do about it? My sister it? announces on the air because they're <laughs> Well, okay, moment of honesty here. As a kid, I rode in the trunk every now and then. <laughs> but listen, wait, yes. wait, listen to me. Was your you name know, Honey Boo Boo? No, oh. look, you know how they have the seats that fold down where yeah. you can connect the back seat? Sure. Well, you know, sometimes I thought it was kind of fun. I was, you know, seven years old. I didn't know any better. That's I, that my was... favorite part of the article is um, they interview the kid who was put in the trunk. They interview yes. his sister. And she says, we all thought he was enjoying it. He, he, <laughs> he seemed excited about it. it the kid, I was like, what? <laughs> Little yeah. boys like that kind of stuff. They don't sure. mind riding around in the trunk. It's a fun Aww. ride. It's a, it's a. I just, I wouldn't trust her with my dog or my child. <laughs> I don't know. I'd give her a plant. Maybe. And my favorite thing about this is that it says goodbye, Earl. <laughs> yeah, I put that Earl? on there. No, no. Earl? Uh, from Dixie the Dixie Chicks song. I know that, but if the kid's name was Earl. <laughs> no, no. I don't know what the what the kid's name was, but God, wouldn't that Let's be call funny? Him Earl. It was in Iowa. I do know that. He's probably named Earl then. Well, she was charged. Before we move on, she was charged and could face as much as a year in prison. And, yeah. and three thousand dollars in fines. That's Dude. a bit excessive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's due. You put a kid. I in know the trunk. I'm going to get emails from people saying, you know, Rob, you put kids. a kid in the trunk. You got to pay three G's. That's, yeah. I mean, that's easy. Nobody charged my parents. For <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably we've, should have. We've now learned things that happened to them. A little sketchy. All right, we've all used Google. Number two topic uses Google Street View. If uh, if you've used that before, it's kind of creepy where you can spy on everything. Yeah. They have these little carts. Here they are. They go around town. They snap lots of pictures mm -hmm. in all directions uh, as they go through, and they put that on Google Earth. Basically, you can go into street level. Well, this is what one Google car got. It, it captured this on camera. Here's a guy holding a gun. And then there's another picture of him actually pointing yes. the gun at the car as it drove by. That's real serious. And first of all, <laughs> is it a guy or it looks to me like a teenager? And I know yeah, it's I'm, hard to tell. Well, I know I'm in the South and I'm gonna get in trouble for this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. This to me is why we need more gun control. Yeah, that's, just, it is, a, just it is really frightening. <laughs> this is just a guy in a Google car just taking yeah. pictures and there's a gun being pointed at And like, if I ironically, I saw the Google car here this morning and my husband saw it last week. Really? It's like a Subaru Impreza wagon. Why are yeah. you trying to shoot at an Impreza? Yeah. Well, I was getting the like pictures it's... for the for the the little graphic you saw there, yeah. and they have all kinds of different cars. In fact, I'm yeah. Our local go back one to was it. like a burgundy uh, Subaru Impreza. So if you see that on the streets, do not draw a gun on. I saw it today. It gave me enough time. I put my eyeliner down. I waved. Was it a new Impreza? Or was it like an? It was an model? older Impreza. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like a 2012 or anything. I mean, it was a little bit older. It was what burgundy. What is that? I don't even know what that is. It's like a Fiat or something. Yeah. That actually not may fancy. be the black version. They're, yeah, I this mean, is this is this is a very expensive version. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's it's the not. thing. It's like, what is threatening about that car? Why did you have to pull a gun on that car? Well, you know, the funny thing, and if you read the article, um, it said that this was the same house that a one-year-old girl was found dead in a closet. And again, this is straight mm -hmm. from the article Whoa. back in June. So um, yeah, that was the okay, update. Okay, so there's more to this. This gun yeah, no, it's not. They're not necessarily related, but it's the same house where there is a dead. Oh, they're related. A dead it's, allegedly. Well, it's Detroit, and <laughs> yeah, it was in Detroit. It's Detroit Rock City. I mean, We're you gotta. Get some emails. I know. Jackie. Get some emails. At I get them all the time. <laughs> all right, we're we're to our number one story of the week. There's a lot. Overall, this isn't that interesting of a story, but when you add up all the little details. Oh, it's look interesting. At the picture, uh, no. Trust me, it's interesting. Overall. Okay, this is Adam Sandler. It's not, not that Adam right? Sandler. Right? Okay. Yeah. I had that question. Not, like, uh, not the very famous Jewish <laughs> Adam Sandler. <laughs> Please note. Please finish your story, Rob. <laughs> so, so he, you know, everybody loves Elmo, right? But this guy was out oh. in front of a lot of different tourist destinations. This time he was out in front of the Toys R Us in Times Square, uh. spouting off anti-Semitic remarks. <laughs> it's the reason why. Bob had to point out. Yeah, that's, <laughs> not, that's not the same Adam Sandler. Not the Hanukkah song, Adam Sandler. Which would be really funny, by the way. <laughs> He's been arrested multiple times. I think he was arrested in... Um Central Park and is he always Elmo or does he no, switch it up? No, he's he's been different things before. Because this this screams of 
Like, get me away from Oscar. Yeah. Doesn't this seem like a too much time little, with Oscar the Grouch? It's a little creepy. It seems like an Oscar the Grouch connection. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's easy, almost easily influenced. He just wants to be tickled. He just wants to have a good time. You get him with Oscar the Grouch too much, and he ends up a racist. And <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's a time but square. Here's, but here's what I want to know. First of all, if his name is Adam Sandler, it's a very Jewish name, is, or is he chosen to call himself Adam, Adam Sandler? Sandler. And oh, either just way, to get the, oh, I never like, thought about like that. Like either way, what is this guy's agenda that. that he's out there? Like I know he's not making friends. Oh, so you think he made up the name Adam Sandler? I, I, uh, I, I mean, it, it seems a little too coincidental. It's a little, yeah. Yeah. And if it's not Adam Sandler's a Jewish name, and so then it doesn't because that would make him Jewish if that's his real name. I never put that. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Bob's always thinking. Bob is on Bob is always so, thinking. So now, if he, now shackled Adam Sandler as an Elmo, what are you given the over under on jail time? Well, if we're going to count his last three movies, including Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill needs to be counted. He keeps trying to not count Jack and Grown Jill. Grown Ups, which they're making oh, a sequel to. And that's unfortunate. And uh, the Was one there a good that, Adam Sandler movie? Don't mess with the Zohan. No offense no. to my friends who are in it. You go back to the Waterboy, I think. That's about. Waterboy, yeah. That's Actually, about. Actually, I liked, I liked Z uh, Click and I liked. Liked, um, Click was okay. Click was a little hard to follow. See, I don't know. I don't know many of those movies. Either way, he's not dressed as Elmo. No, <laughs> and it's and not really not Adam okay. Sandler, by the way. Oh, I know we digress. <laughs> to confuse half the people that are watching. People we that digress. just tuned in. What Adam Sandler was dressed as Elmo? I mean, it's Elmo? a valid point, though. He's in Times Square, and he's he's <laughs> really not making a lot of friends. No. What were you trying to do, Elmo? What were you doing? Starved for attention. Yeah. I know Bert is mad. <laughs> Bert and Ernie are angry yeah. with him. You know that. Well, Too and I'm much. pretty sure Disney owns that whole block right there. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So and he's so just making people angry left and right. Not, not, not really <laughs> his audience, so to speak. Not his crowd. <laughs> not his crowd. Well, thank you both for being here for six things. We've had a lot of fun. I wish we had six more things to talk about because nice. this has been a so lot of fun. We. I know. When are you back? We're gonna go. We're gonna go on Jackie's show and talk about six oh things gosh. on her show. Monday morning. There we go. Monday there morning, go. 10 a.m. to 3. <laughs> I'm in town. Yeah. Endlessly. Yes. <laughs> well, I want to thank I want to thank Jackie Jordan as well as Bob Merrick for both being here for this episode of Six Things. And of course, next week maybe we'll have them back, but we'll have six more things. Yeah.